Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the John Audio Tech Show. Today on the bench, I want to try a little experiment here and see if I can make a transistor junction give off some light. Well, I remember a long time ago, I was reading a book about how LEDs work, light-emitting diodes. Well, I remember reading and them saying that even silicon diodes will give off some infrared light, or I guess... It's not really light, more like radiation, because you normally can't see it. Well, normally they give off heat and just a little bit of infrared. So if it works with diodes, I wanted to see if I can try it with a transistor here and uh, see if I can get it on camera. So after playing around, I found out that you have to connect the transistor uh, reverse polarity from normal and as you crank up the voltage it will suddenly avalanche it'll act like a zener diode and I don't know the actual process going on you'd have to talk to a physicist who's into semiconductor materials if it's really an avalanche effect going on but when the uh, electrons and the holes combine, they'll give off heat and a little bit of infrared radiation. So, like I say, I hooked this up in reverse. The base is not connected. And turn up the supply, and depending on the transistor, somewhere around 12 volts or so, it'll start to conduct. So... Let's try it. Let's see if I can catch this on the camera. And I also want to try it with a solar panel. I was watching another video, Steve Mould, or I don't know how you pronounce his name, but anyhow, he was doing something like this with a solar panel and an infrared sensitive camera, and you could see it actually glow. So let's try it out here with a solar panel as well and see what the results are. Now in case this camera here is not sensitive enough, I have this camera which I modified. A while back I took it apart and took the hot mirror out of it. It's just a little filter in front of the sensor that blocks infrared light because it would screw up all the colors and everything when using it outside. And it makes the camera more sensitive to infrared light. So I'll try using this if this camera doesn't work. Okay, turn the lights out. Connected to power here. I don't know if it's going to focus. Oh, look at that. Yeah, around 12 volts with this transistor. And you can see... Kind of the outline there. That's the emitter. You're seeing the outline of the emitter. Actually, the space between the emitter and the base region. See if I can turn that, you can see it. And uh, it actually works with the camera. I can see it with my eye a little bit. But this camera doesn't have its filter removed, but I can still see it just enough I'm turning the voltage up and down that's why it's going in and out so I'm not sure why the transistor conducts like that avalanches or whatever the process is I know the emitter region is heavily doped like some Tour de France cyclists and <laughs> it must be that in the case of a NPN this would be heavily doped with a material that gives it excess electrons and the positive, connecting it to positive helps, you know, pull it out and, you know, pull current through the transistor. But like I say, uh, a semiconductor physicist would have to tell you the exact process is going on there. Okay, so now we'll try the solar panel. I have to set the supply for a higher voltage because I'm using this supply and uh, 
it tops out at 15 volts so I can parallel the channels together and get a higher voltage because this will need a bit higher voltage I believe before it starts to uh, give off any infrared so I just hook it up positive to positive negative to negative doesn't matter if it has a bypass diode because that's connected the other way around but if it has a blocking diode it won't work because of course that would block the reverse current from going in now of course with the uh, transistor it has to be on a heat sink because this conducted at 12 volts and I was putting one amp through it so that's quite a bit of heat 12 watts but with this it's a large area so I'll be putting you know whatever this start to conduct at you know be putting that much current or um, voltage times the current through it all right let's see what happens here okay so I've been playing around here and trying to get a good shot this camera just would not work it has a night scene mode where it slows the frame rate down because it has to slow the shutter way down to I don't know what it is but something like twice per second and it still wouldn't show anything I just get blackness but when I tried this camera it has a long shutter mode you set up and I actually got a decent photo and that's what I'll insert now so the image overlaying is kind of an eerie looking purplish color is actually the panel giving off infrared radiation I can tell that the panels in pretty good condition because I can see a fairly even glow I'm kind of getting or some of the little segments seem to be brighter than others I'm not sure what that's all about but you can see little cracks as well but still there's picking up radiation from across the crack now there is one area where some of those lines are dark and it's not making connection at some point just that little area which I'll indicate with an arrow the reason for the purplish color just has to do with the camera sensor it has little colored filters over each sensor area and each one accepts a different amount of infrared and you get this uh, purplish color bias that's the reason for that well there you have it a solar panel and a transistor emitting infrared radiation and a little bit of light at least with the transistor I can see a really faint glow with my own eye so you don't have to have a special camera for that but the solar panel I couldn't see anything without using a modified camera but yeah that's pretty neat and uh, well not much more to say on that so I'll wrap it up here thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one